Yeah, sorry, no Bill Nye and less dancing, actually. Um, yeah, so thank you, uh, GC Summit, for asking me to talk. Uh, I am Bob Schaefer. I'm going to be talking on behalf of Team Bloodshot. And Bob, I'm going to let you finish. I'm going to let you finish, okay? But right now, you are organizing one of the biggest simulcasts in the world. In the world! <laughs> That's random and completely unplanned. Um, <laughs> uh, Deb does bring up a good point, though. I was thinking about this talk, and I realized that I actually do have a lot of recast and simulcast experience. Um, uh, Dave Fisher and I put on a hunt about four or five years ago when I was teaching down at Harvey Mudd. Uh, he and I ran a hunt at each of our respective schools, uh, so that was a two-city simulcast. Um, Bang 25 was run up in Seattle as a snap, I believe. Uh, I was the Bay Area coordinator for Dash 2 and the national, I like to call myself the Dash Tater um, for Dash 3 and currently for Dash 4. So who was actually my fifth experience with a simulcast recast, but it was the first time on the recast side of it. Um, as you know, it was done for two cities. So the outline in this, uh, I'm going to talk about our team, uh, a little bit about the schedule, what we did before and after the Seattle run. As you know, we played in the Seattle version. Um, actually, it's a funny story, and, and I'll... I got a little extra time because I wasn't supposed to start till 2.30, so. Um, the question came up as to how the recast kind of got motivated. Uh, Corey is a master manipulator. Uh, I don't know if you know that. Um, but uh, I don't know what happened before we heard about it, but we got an email after the application announcement went out from Corey saying, you know, the, the, uh, the who up in Seattle conflicts with the bang that we want to run. You know, if, if they agreed to have you, I don't know, play for you know not having to accept or uh, submit an application, and you guys did a recast, if we could work something out there, w would that be OK? And you know we we're like, sure. I mean, we should probably run a big game anyway. Um, and their side, from what I heard, was very happy with that. And, and sure enough, so Corey didn't have to go up to Seattle to play in the game, but he did anyway. Uh, they ended up moving the bang, so the original reason for <laughs> that motivated the recast uh, ended up not being a reason at all. Um, <laughs> but but it all worked out very well. Um, anyway, so uh, going to talk a little bit about our big picture decisions, uh, how we got some feedback uh, in order to help make some of the minor changes that we did make, uh, some of the tools we used, uh, just my feeling about the recast pros and cons. Um, got a slide about the budget, and then I'll I'll wrap up. Uh, so yeah, the Bay Area team, the core group is Team Bloodshot. Uh, I am the lone long shot member on that team, and then there are five Blood and Bones members: uh, Rich Bragg, Scott Krieger, Mike Holzbar, Robert Chang, and Dave Fisher. So the six of us were the the core group, and we were responsible more for the big picture and the organization effort for the recast. And then there was major, major, major support from. The Burninators, uh, mostly the three Burninators in this room that uh, hadn't already that had already played in it, um, Corey, uh, Waywa, and Doug. Um, they provided a majority of the puzzle fixes and any rewrites and a lot of the reconstruction effort. And then we actually got additional final weekend support from others that had played in the game up in Seattle that flew down, um, including the Seattle GC themselves. Uh, so the schedule went pretty much started with us playing in the game in June. Uh, we had a little bit of a minimal effort that started in July. Uh, that ramped up by September, and then our final big push was obviously the month before the event started in, in November. Uh, so before the Seattle run, applications were due, and Seattle collected all the applications at first. Uh, they made their selections, and then when they were done doing that, and after we had submitted ours, they supplied us with the applications that either preferred the Bay Area or that didn't get into Seattle and may have had the Bay Area as a second choice. Um, we trusted Seattle GC with all pregame logistics, meaning we hadn't seen the game, we didn't want to see the game, and we let them tell us how long they thought it would take us to create the recast. And then based on that and our schedule, we kind of picked November as a, an arbitrary date. But we hadn't seen anything. Um, and then, of course, after the game, Seattle relinquished all decisions to us. Um, but we stayed blind until after the first run, mostly because we wanted to fully enjoy the game and we didn't want to have any um, advantage. Uh, so after the Seattle run, uh, we knew what we were getting into. We had about 15 teams, and we decided to extend the application deadline. 
uh, mostly as an attempt to expand. Uh, we figured we'd try to get up to the 20 teams that Seattle had. Didn't work. I think we got up to 17. Um, and then we collected information from Seattle. We got their clue materials, documents, a uh, shared puzzle Bible. We asked them about their budget. And we asked them about any changes that they recommended. Um, but, but then we made all of the major big picture decisions on our own. Uh, and those big picture decisions kind of stemmed from the major decision that we wanted to try to stay true to the original game, which means when possible, we wanted to avoid any major changes. Um, we felt that the good sides of that are that the participants would get the same experience in both cities. As Corey mentioned, for the epic adventure standpoint, that's what the participants would probably want. Uh, we also felt that this gave the GC, the original GC, a little bit more visibility. Um, uh, a plus and a minus is that it drives major decisions. On the plus side, they're easy. If, if you have that mantra that you don't want to make any major changes and you want to try to stay true to the original game, then tough decisions are made for you. Um, but it also drives major decisions, so there's a lot less flexibility. If you had an idea that you really thought would work better, well, if you're trying to stay true to the original game, maybe you wouldn't go that route in terms of changing it. Um, and this could have been a lot more work. I put the sad face just because if, if you're deciding on this, it could be. But in our case, it didn't. Um, we actually felt like staying true to the original game and with the contribution that we got both from the, the local help here from the Burninators and from the Seattle GC, that just worked out really, really well. Um, another thing for who specifically, uh, we decided we were going to avoid reshooting videos partly because we're lazy. Uh, and that would have been an enormous undertaking that we didn't think was going to add a whole lot of value. Uh, plus, at the time, we decided we were going to try to pay tribute to the original actors and, and the original GC. Um, as we talked about it more, I think we had decided that it may have ruined the flavor a little bit, so we had considered reshooting the videos. And then we were able to uh, get Seattle GC to fly down here and actually <laughs> reprise their roles, which was enormous. Yeah. No, that, that was fantastic. In fact, the only original boss that didn't make it was the internet troll, and we were able to work around that very, very easily. So I'll, I'll talk about that too in a little bit. Uh, so the feedback to drive the minor changes, there were a lot of resources available to us to get information that, that drove those minor changes. For one, as, as was mentioned by Jay, there was a, a Facebook site that all of the original players got to comment on about the original game. So we were able to read all the comments and see all of their perspective about things that they really enjoyed. Uh, we also used our own experiences, not only uh, ours, Team Bloodshots, but also the Burninators and uh, other teams that we knew. Um, Seattle GC themselves recommended some fixes, and we surveyed the original participants. We asked that the Seattle GC email the teams that played in the original game and ask them what they liked, what they didn't like, the importance of the story, how important was the Friday night hotel stay to the feel of the event, uh, what bugs did they find, uh, how did they like the scoring, things like that. Uh, some of the minor changes that we did make, um, uh, a little bit more transparency. We felt that the scoring wasn't necessarily crystal clear, so we wanted to make sure that was very spelled out at the beginning. Uh, the purpose of the Friday night events, when we did it, it was kind of ambiguous whether or not it was part of the hunt, whether it was supposed to be really collaborative, et cetera. We wanted to really spell that out for the teams on this end. So we, we made global and obvious announcements that it was not scored and that collaboration was strongly recommended. Um, another thing that happened up in Seattle, uh, and it was a conscious decision by the GC up there, was to try to limit the spread of the teams and have set start times. Um, and so that resulted in a lot of bottlenecking. So. Uh, we made the conscious decision to try to reduce that bottleneck and to just let the pace of the teams dictate how we distributed ourselves. And uh, a big smiley for the participants, because I think it gives a clean, unaltered feel for the teams, both at the very front and at the very back of the, of the team list. Um, but it's very straining on GC, and this is something that, in retrospect, we had a little bit of guilt over. Because when we made that decision... It was us in the room, the six core GC, making the decision that we were willing to dedicate ourselves to that. Uh, then it later became something that strained the actors that were nice enough to fly down and were doing this on very little sleep. And because they were the actors and the way the story went, they were needed in like three different spots. And so it was, it was uh, a lot to ask. And they were very, very uh, gracious to do that. Um, and then the puzzles themselves. We did some reordering. Uh, we did some bug fixes. We eliminated some red herrings. Uh, we, we considered some other changes, um, 
the, the internet troll puzzle is uh, a classic example of one of them that we that we really considered changing. Uh, we had heard a lot of people say that it was a little long, uh, and at the time of the event, it was just one of the ones that really tended to drag out. But in the end, we decided to keep it, again, sticking to the mantra to stay true to the original event. Um, but we did add a little wrinkle. We, uh, we added the part where the back teams, we were going to let them know that they could start driving. Um, if for those that played in the Bay Area, this event or this clue took place at, or it started in Foster City, and then teams were going to travel uh, uh, west towards Half Moon Bay. When we play tested this, it was late October, and the pumpkin patch right across the bridge before you get into Half Moon Bay is very popular. <laughs> and it took, uh, we had two play test teams. One team got ahead of the pumpkin rush. And the other team was stick, stuck in traffic for about an hour and a half, hadn't gotten to like 280 yet, and decided, or uh, one, yeah, 280 yet, and just decided to head down to Google. And so we collected all the bosses, sent them down to Google, and finished up the game down there. Um, so that actually motivated a change that we made in our run. We we decided to after 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. we were going to go ahead and send teams ahead, let them start traveling on the road. And uh, that way they'd be closer to the next spot. And that would lower the spread a little bit at the end. Um, and I did mention that the internet troll couldn't make it down. So we had set up a chat room so that people could communicate with the internet troll. Uh, for those not familiar with the game, the, the game involved uh, verbal duels with the different bosses. And the internet troll was the first boss that was dueled with. And so we had various GC. It was mostly myself and one other a uh, GC member that would have chat windows open ready to duel with the teams as they got online and, and uh, started that process. Um, but we had the picture of the original internet troll to pay homage to him. Um, some tools that we used, uh, Corey mentioned some of the obvious tools. I'm sure people use them for, for all different games. Uh, so these aren't necessarily recast specific, but we had uh, Google Docs for all of our shared documents. We had the uh, Puzzle Bible. Seattle had a version of the, Seattle, uh, of the Puzzle Bible for their end. And then we actually wrote one for our end as well because there was enough Bay Area specific material that we wanted to make sure we included. Um, and then we also uh, asked... Uh, teams to send us their Google Latitude information, and that was for day of tracking. So got a little picture coming up here in a second. So here's a picture of our Google Docs screen. You know that's probably a, a fifth of the files that we created for this thing. Um, an example of our puzzle bible. Uh, we had, you know, where the puzzle was going to take place. We had the original author. I don't know if it's big enough. But you can see Jet's names there, and we had the Bay Area owner because each each puzzle had a Bay Area owner that kind of took it, understood it manipulated it if it needed to be manipulated and then kind of was in charge of delegating the recreation of that puzzle. Uh, we had all the playtest staff, contact information, answer, and then underneath it goes on that talks about construction and the way that the puzzle was going to run. Uh, and then here's a screenshot from Google Latitude. You can see teams, this is uh, nearly early on Saturday morning. Uh, down here in the lower right-hand corner is uh, one of our GC members, Scott, still hanging out at Massey's at the karaoke puzzle. And uh, various teams had left there and made their way north all the way down to some front runners that were down here about ready to head over to boot camp. Um, we had 11 of the 17 teams that had actually sent us the information. I was able to monitor their location fairly well. Every once in a while, there'd be a, a latitude GPS issue, and various heads would start floating in the bay, and I'd be all worried for a second that <laughs> they were going the wrong way or, or, I don't know, scuba diving for a puzzle that wasn't there. But um, a majority of that coordination happened through text messages. I was kind of a central... Uh, beacon for information and people would text me or chat me or call me or whatever so I could distribute GC accordingly. But but Latitude was kind of fun to look at and useful when uh, when I wasn't getting immediate feedback. Uh, so some of the recast pros, uh, puzzle writing and storyline are all done. That's just finished. Uh, if you're going to have Neil Patrick Harris in your game, <laughs> that's already done, already filmed, already edited. It's great. Uh, and as Corey said, the first game is a giant play test. So 20 teams have already looked at every puzzle thoroughly uh, very few modifications are necessary, um, and uh, on our end, changes were made with the full support of the Seattle GC. And if you're nice to original GC, they just may travel to your location to, to help. Or as I point out, if you seem incompetent enough, they might just come down to witness the chaos that occurs. 
Uh, some of the recast cons, uh, again, less creativity involved. You're especially if you're just trying to stay true to the original event. You're just you're just rerunning it. The focus is on logistics, um, and maybe that was more for our core group at the beginning because the Burninators really took the front edge of uh, of the puzzle re rewrites. I'll, if possible, or uh, sometimes if you're not careful, the wheel may get reinvented. In our case, there was a lot of support from Seattle's GC, so there was a lot of communication there, and we rarely reinvented the wheel. Um, sometimes we invented new wheels, as uh, was pointed out with the, the blinky light robot puzzle and a couple of others. Um, in our case, and this is something Corey also mentioned, the locations were driven by the puzzles and not vice versa, so I see that as a little bit of a con. Seattle, as we learned later, actually thought up some of the puzzles based on locations. They actually, I believe, I, I remember Jay's story right, they came up with Salmon Man and a couple of the characters based on locations, whereas we had to kind of create locations that fit those characters, um, which isn't horrible except that those five locations had to come at the very end, like the bosses were... It, it, the, the game worked out such that the boss clues were the last five clues of the day or of the weekend. Um, so that was that was a constraint on our part that uh, that made it a little of a negative. Uh, two other specific recast negatives on our side. Turns out the Breeders' Cup, November 4th, November 6th, that uh, eliminated one of our puzzle locations. We wanted to do it at one of the horse tracks, and they said no chance. <laughs> it's a very popular weekend among horse race watchers and, and gamblers. And uh, daylight savings time was something that the original team did not have to deal with up in Seattle, and we did. And uh, that caused for a lot of major code rewrite on uh, Rich Bragg's part. So that was pretty heroic on his part, and it ended up being seamless. Right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I uh, thought it was interesting to look at the budget a little bit. I think that if you looked at a normal budget, it probably would not have such a small amount for the clues. In fact, I think that the Seattle budget had about twice as much allocated for the clues. Um, the staff number here reflects actually the Seattle flights. Uh, we haven't told Seattle this yet, so surprise. We actually did uh, turn a profit. <laughs> uh, we had built in some money to pay Seattle back for the losses that we heard that they incurred. And we knew that they were flying down. So we really wanted to try to make sure that we didn't end up behind ourselves so that we could give some money back up to them to help balance out their losses. Um, the location number here takes into account the Friday night uh, location and the pier that we reserved for the Salmon Man Clue. And the prep number is very high, and that's because it incorporates the hotel that uh, all 100 participants and staff members stayed at. Uh, so in the end, uh, we felt like it was a very, very pleasant experience, and we feel that with the right support, a recast can be very pain-free. Uh, I think it was kind of telling in the end that after the Seattle GC came and we were hanging out before the event that both sides thought that for the recast effort, the other side had done so much more work than was actually done. So, uh, so that was kind of neat. Um, and again, it was very rewarding to share Seattle's game with the Bay Area. Uh, Seattle GC rocks. There, there are the. Uh, there are more GC. Those are those are the uh, the bosses only. I didn't have pictures for everyone else. Um, and uh, yeah, in conclusion, I'll I'll take any questions. It was supposed to be a movie that ran, but that's okay. Any questions? Okay, so she was asking. She knew that we had a lot of people from Seattle's GC come down, but she was wondering how we uh, got others to come down and how we supported the group. Um, that just kind of happened. Uh, I don't know. Rich can nod. I believe that he was contacted by Curtis and uh, Mike Hillsdale and Jeff Wallace. Uh, they just wanted to come down and help out. It wasn't something that we necessarily asked for. We kind of maybe incorrectly or naively felt that we were okay as far as staff went. And if we needed more, we could find more locally. And then it just kind of worked out. And then people like yourself asked. Linda was a very helpful day of. And we had uh, Rich's wife, Kiki, and a couple others, you know, help out. So... They just stepped up, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the bosses, we did ask if they would like to come down and reprise their roles. Can you roles. the question, please? Uh, the, the, he, she was just following up on the original question that we didn't really do much to uh, solicit the extra support that we got uh, outside of the actors. The actors, we did ask for specifically if they would be willing to come down and reprise their roles, and then the other people just kind of asked if they could come down and volunteered to come down to help out, which was huge. Because a couple of them were original puzzle writers and were very helpful. Mike Hillsdale was one of the um, brains behind the 
forget the name of it, but the clue where you were getting filmed for your yes, nos, and maybes. And uh, so when we ever had technical difficulties there, he was at Google to help out, and he was the one with the original vision. So that worked out really well. So just a comment from, I, I might have been the only person who flew down from Seattle to the Bay Area to play the game. Uh, and uh, it felt like it wasn't a recast at all. It just felt like a good game. Thanks a lot. Oh, you're very welcome, and that's awesome uh, feedback. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. <laughs>